Welcome to the John and Heidi Show podcast. John and Heidi. Here's John and Heidi. Today is a special day, Heidi. Do you know what today is? What is today, John? I thought you'd never ask. Since it's the weekend, let's do the whole darn thing. Saturday is National Dentist's Day. Ooh, hey, we should say Happy Dentist Day to our dentist. National Dress Day. National Frozen Food Day. National Oreo Cookie Day, and National White Chocolate Cheesecake Day. Sunday, the seventh day of March, National Flapjack Day. Every time I hear the word flapjack, I think of... Groundhog Day. Yeah, every time. I knew you were going to say it. Uh, National Bee Herd Day, National Cereal Day, National Crown of Roast Pork Day. That sounds delicious. And Finisher's Medal Day. All of those things happening on this weekend edition of the John and Heidi Show. Also, uh, I've got a guest today. Remember Murder Hornets from 2020? I do. And then people are like, whatever happened to the Murder Hornets? Well, we're going to learn a lot about the Murder Hornets from a beekeeper and expert in the field, Mr. Ted McFall. And there's a new television program, like a, a what do you call those, documentary, I think? Okay. Uh, we're going to chat with him all about it coming up. Addiction. It's not a pretty thing. Addiction can lead to many problems in your life. Addiction can drive away those who love you the most. And addiction can lead to the loss of jobs, relationships, and even your life. Don't let addiction tear your life apart anymore. Get the help you need to defeat addiction and put the pieces back together in your life. Learn more at timeforrehab.com. They want to help. Timeforrehab.com. That's timeforrehab.com. Now, surveys and studies and such brought to you by BetterCreditCards.com. A new study says talking on the phone for 10 minutes could make you feel less lonely. (laughs) Really? (laughs) Who does these surveys? We really do need to start our own institute, don't we? (laughs) You are on the phone more than a teenage girl, and I'm not exaggerating at all. Yeah, especially nowadays because teenage girls don't get on the phone. So you must never feel lonely ever, 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 ever. I, I uh, once in a while I'll drive away from here. And Not I'll even be, two minutes. I'll be on the end of the and street. And the phone rings, and I'm like, seriously, you just pulled out. <laughs> I was like, hey, I just thought of something. <laughs> Can you yeah. write a note and stick it on my desk? <laughs> hey, a new one poll survey finds three quarters of Americans feel the need to escape the real world due to stress of COVID 19. The survey says 71% of respondents started playing more video games more often during the quarantine than they did before. I can so, see that. There you go. Surveys and studies and such brought to you by BetterCreditCards.com. Do you have a credit card? We'd like to help you get a better credit card. If you don't have any credit cards, we'd like to help you too. At BetterCreditCards.com, we have credit cards that offer different things for different people. Some cards offer points. Some cards are designed to help you build your credit. BetterCreditCards.com wants to help you get a better credit card, no matter what you're looking for. See if we can help you find a better credit card at bettercreditcards.com. That's bettercreditcards.com. This is your Brain on Drugs, brought to you by Time for Rehab.com. In the UK, a burglar reportedly told his victim that her house was not her house anymore after he spent quite a bit of time, you know, drinking and eating there during the theft. Court heard that the thief tried to make himself feel at home by consuming food from the fridge. He also took cans of Foster's Lager, when he felt the need to quench his thirst. When the owner came home, she said, the man, uh, what are you doing? She said, he replied, it's not your house because <laughs> I've been here all day. It's not quite how it works, it's like but finders, A for effort there, my friend. keepers? Is that yeah, kind of a, no. Yeah, well, he, he did get arrested and he did go to court and he... He was wrong. It was still her house. It is still her house, yeah. I wonder how Foster's likes being, a, instead of it just saying that. <laughs> you drank some beer. Yeah. He drank Foster. This is the story not brought to you by Foster. <laughs> but that is what happens when your brain is on Foster's. John and Heidi. Now, big screen, little screen, brought to you by ChannelSurferTV.com. Hey, there's a lot of nostalgia 90s going around uh, on the Star Trek franchise right now. The Lower Decks paying homage to the era of the franchise, uh, upcoming Prodigy animated series, bringing back Kate Mulgrew's Captain Janeway. There's also Picard, a continuation of Star Trek The Next Generation. But could the movie series follow the trend of the TV shows and switch from rebooting 60s Trek to TNG? That is what... One person is expecting, Brent Spinner, the actor, thinks that it's a matter of time before Paramount gives Next Generation cast the same treatment they gave Kirk and the rest of the original Enterprise crew. I 
loved The Next Generation. And he thinks there's going to be a reboot on the big screen. So. I could see that. That was my... Honestly, I've watched some of the original Star Treks. I didn't I, like them, but I loved The Next Generation. I have to admit, I don't even know half of what I just said. So <laughs> that's oh, really? big I, screen, I, little screen. I did like that one a Brought lot. to you by ChannelSurferTV.com. At WeirdGiftOfTheDay.com, we help you get ready for all the fun holidays throughout the year with fun, silly, and just plain weird gift ideas for your friends. If you have a friend who has a bizarre sense of humor, we've got a gift for them. WeirdGiftOfTheDay.com posts a link to something that will make you smile each and every day. Whether you buy these weird gifts or not, it's worth checking out just for a smile. WeirdGiftOfTheDay.com That's WeirdGiftOfTheDay.com Now your scoop of the day comes your way, courtesy of RedCrossBlood.org. I can tell you right now, uh, Heidi and I used to completely disagree on this topic, but now I think we agree a whole lot more. Uh, Here we go. It says, close to two-thirds of Americans who have not yet retired say that when the time comes for them to retire, they're still going to work for pay after retiring. So they're still going to do something. Right. The reason given most often has nothing to do with money. They just simply say, I would want to stay busy. Right. Now, I can tell you, I remember 11 years ago, we were talking to a financial planner, and he said, what age do you want to retire? And I said, never. And I said, now. (laughs) I was like, I never want to retire. I love what I do. And I got to tell you, I still love what I do. But someday, I I do think I want to retire now. I'm not saying now. So if you're, you know listening in the other room, please don't come swooping in and take my job. (laughs) I love what I'm doing. I'm having a lot of fun doing this. But I can also tell you there will be a day when I'm going to go, this probably isn't for me anymore. I mean, and I hope it's a long, long ways from now. Because, again, I do love what I'm doing. But I can also imagine that I don't want to do this until I'm dead. And, you know, I just think I think that would be really sad. I want to enjoy life, too. Again, I'm good with tomorrow. <laughs> Heidi's taking... I'm doubling she's down. She's cleaning out her office drawers right now. What are you doing over there? All right. Hey, a report found that farmers' markets are not that great of a deal. Okay. Did anybody no, think not. they were? Nobody said that's where you go to save no, money. No, you go there because you want to have locally sourced, locally grown. Right. I don't think that any... I don't know. Maybe people thought that was like a bargain thing, but... Most people go I've there because never of the before quality. Thought, yeah, yeah, it's, it's like the quality, quality, not because you're, you're going, oh, hey, that's the cheapest place to buy that. No, it's probably not, but it's going to be a good quality item. So I don't know. Over here, a woman in Brazil underwent routine cosmetic surgery for first a tummy tuck, then a breast job. That is not routine. But, well, this is the interesting part. <sighs> After the surgery, she mysteriously developed the compulsion to steal. Oh. That had never happened before the surgery. Afterwards, for some weird reason, she felt the need to go stealing stuff. Oh, that's so, interesting. Yeah, I think that's probably why they called it routine. So it's just a regular surgery, but then she's like, hey, I want to go steal something. Yeah, routine is like, oh, I'm getting my tonsils out. <laughs> I don't know. These are all electives. They are not routine surgeries. All right, hey. A survey of drivers found that a majority of them talk to their cars regularly and 20% worry about their cars' feelings. <laughs> wow, that's Eddie? disturbing. Do you ever worry about your car's feelings? No. Uh, I've never ever worried about my car's feelings, but maybe I'm just a bad person. That's probably what it is. And one last thing. Do I have time? Yeah, I'm going to get to this. A study says the average kitchen sponge has 20 times more germs than the average toilet seat. I knew this, actually. So this is the sponge in your kitchen 200 times more germs than the average toilet seat and because of this i do not use a sponge there you go i'm glad because if you did oof. thanks for listening to the john and heidi show early to bed early to rise makes you healthy wealthy and wise this is a great quote from benjamin franklin at insurancechicken.com we know a thing or two about great quotes we help people get great insurance quotes every day it's super simple and free to find out if we can make you healthy wealthy and wise okay i can't guarantee that but i can assure you we'd love to help at insurancechicken.com we want to help you pack out great deals on insurance that's insurancechicken.com thank you for listening to the john and heidi show super excited to visit with beekeeper ted mcfall ted how are you doing today you? I am fantastic. Now, we're going to chat with you because uh, last year we were hearing about this Asian giant hornet. People were referring to them as murder hornets. And you have a new documentary, Attack of the Murder Hornets. Tell me a little bit about this documentary and tell me a little bit about a murder hornet. What in the world is a murder hornet? Well, 
Well, a murder hornet is the world's largest hornet. They're three inches long. Their jaws are huge. They can bite off the heads of bees, which is what they do. They, they can also bite uh, people or bite uh, other animals and other critters. They have a long stinger. The stinger is, is a quarter inch long, and they're able to, to pump an insane amount of venom into a person if they're able to sting you. They can also spray venom, which will actually blind a person. So this is a terrible creature to have on the U.S. soil just because they're a danger to people. But bigger than that is they're a threat to the honeybee population because what they do is they seek out honeybee colonies to decimate. And actually, that's how I got involved in this whole thing is I am a beekeeper. The murder hornets found one of my bee colonies and they beheaded an entire colony of my bee. Wow, that's crazy. Now, we heard about murder hornets in 2020, and then we kind of quit hearing about it. Is this a big deal, and is it still going on? Yeah, it's, it's really a big deal, and it's still going on. You, you know, the thing is, whenever it hit the national news, you know, it kind of definitely with, with the flash in the pan, like, it got everyone's attention, and then kind of everyone's like, okay, well, you know, I guess that turned into a nothing burger. You know, we're not worried about it anymore. But the reality is those murder hornets are still here on the U.S. soil. And in the Pacific Northwest, in the area where we're, we're trying to stop them, we're trying to keep them from spreading across the United States. You know, we're doing everything we can to eradicate them. And if we're unsuccessful, then they're going to be all over the entire United States, and everyone's going to be saying, oh, well, why didn't we do something earlier? And so you're going to see in the documentary the efforts of trying to eradicate this thing. You know, we're not sure exactly how many nests there are. And so, you know, it's, it's tricky to, to be able to track their nests, because if we find a big murder hornet flying around, and even if we're able to capture it or kill it, that's really not very helpful because we have to find the nest where the queen is, where they're laying more eggs, which turn into pupa, which will end up emerging as more murder hornets. And so, you know, we're, we're trying to find all the nests to eradicate those. And, uh, yeah, it's just, a, just a, total, a total brutal battle up here of trying to get rid of them before they kill off our honeybees. So, Ted, how long have you been a beekeeper in the honeybee business? I have been a beekeeper my whole life. My father was a beekeeper. Uh, his father was actually a beekeeper. So it's kind of my blood. I've always been around it. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, I have never seen anything like this murder hornet problem. I mean, to, to know that there's something that can show up and just decapitate all my bees, uh, you know, from, from one hour to the next, uh, it's just totally uh, disheartening. And, uh, and uh, the reality is, you know, honeybees are, are desperately needed for our, for our food. You know, the agricultural industry depends on our honeybees and the, and the pollination that our honeybees do. And so, uh, you know, the, the thing is, even if someone doesn't care about honeybees, uh, if you eat food, then you definitely have a, st- a stake in this battle, because if this thing gets out and starts slaughtering more honeybee colonies, the price of food is going to go through the roof. And that's the thing. It's not just the price of honey, because honey, of course, of course would be directly def- uh, affected by this, but uh, it, in addition, you were talking about how this pollinates everything else. So any food that grows that needs pollination, honeybees are kind of the busy little bees that make that happen. Absolutely. You know, so much, so many of our fruits and vegetables and nuts you know, and all these things are totally dependent on, on honeybees. There's a few uh, crops that, that are, uh, like, wind-pollinated, such as corn. So even if uh, bees uh, disappear, you'll still have corn. But, you know, to, to have a, a diet that will keep, keep you healthy... Uh, you know, you're going to be in big trouble if something happens to the honeybees. If somebody would like to watch this documentary, uh, The Attack of the Murder Hornets, it's on Discovery Plus, is that right? That's right. Uh, it's, it's on Discovery Plus. It plays out kind of like a work of fiction, so it's not like some type of a, a boring documentary. But let me tell you, everything in it is totally accurate and totally true. And so I think people are, are going to, uh, well, people are already being surprised at, uh, at what's going on uh, right now because, I, I just wish that this, this problem didn't have to happen during the middle of a pandemic whenever there's other things to worry about. Because if this, if this didn't happen during a pandemic, you know, this would definitely have the attention of the whole, the whole country saying, uh-oh, you know, we are in big trouble. You know, we got to stop this thing right now. So I'm really glad that such a high-quality documentary was released by Discovery. I think that's awesome. Ted, thank you for your time today, and thank you for your work on this project. Yeah, thank you. Thank you guys for covering it. Again, beekeeper Ted McFall, and he is one of the people you're going to see in the new feature documentary, Attack of the Murder Hornets. It's now available on Discovery+. Plus. I've got a link to all the information in the show notes for today at johnandheidyshow.com. Addiction. It's not a pretty thing. Addiction can lead to many problems in your life. Addiction can drive away those who love you the most. And addiction can lead to the loss of jobs, relationships, and even your life. Don't let addiction tear your life apart anymore. Get the help you need to defeat addiction and put the pieces back together in your life. Learn more at timeforrehab.com. They want to help. 
timeforrehab.com. That's timeforrehab.com. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Ketchup was once sold as medicine. Can you imagine that? Really? Yeah, in the 1830s, ketchup was sold. I've never heard that as before. As medicine. And here's the thing, I can tell you when I'm, you know, feeling blue, and <sighs> don't feel that great. You squirt a little ketchup and some French fries. All of a sudden, I feel better. <laughs> so it's like medicine today, too. I kind of agree with that. <laughs> okay. Not gonna lie. I'm. I don't think I'm gonna probably get Best prescribed medicine. Hangover medicine. <laughs> is that what it is? Ever. <laughs> yeah. Ketchup sold in the 1830s as medicine. Now you know. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show. Do you have a credit card? We'd like to help you get a better credit card. If you don't have any credit cards, we'd like to help you, too. At BetterCreditCards.com, we have credit cards that offer different things for different people. Some cards offer points. Some cards are designed to help you build your credit. BetterCreditCards.com wants to help you get a better credit card, no matter what you're looking for. See if we can help you find a better credit card at BetterCreditCards.com. That's Better Credit Card. Cards.com. Time now for a news headline from somewhere in this world, Dateline China. Uh, a guy in China wanted some money, so he set up a makeshift roadblock and started charging a toll to truck drivers. <laughs> for payment, he was accepting cash or cigarettes. The man was sentenced. Oh my gosh. Yeah, he was sentenced to some prison time and a year probation for quote picking quarrels and provoking troubles. End quote. That's the law that he broke. Nice. Heidi would get that every day if that was a law on Facebook. Picking quarrels and provoking troubles. You like doing that. I do like doing that. I know. There are times that she'll post something. She's like, oh, 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 this is going to make some people mad. (laughs) Why would you post it Uh, And I'm in jail again. Yeah, yeah. See, I try to stay out of that. I started a pillow fight the other day on my page. sure did. Sure didn't mean to. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show. At weirdgiftoftheday.com, we help you get ready for all the fun holidays throughout the year with fun, silly, and just plain weird gift ideas for your friends. If you have a friend who has a bizarre sense of humor, we've got a gift for them. Weirdgiftoftheday.com posts a link to something that will make you smile each and every day. Whether you buy these weird gifts or not, it's worth checking out just for a smile. Weirdgiftoftheday.com. That's weirdgiftoftheday.com. Now some weird news brought to you by weirdgiftoftheday.com. The Butler County, Ohio bomb squad was called to a church. This is just the most bizarre story. Um... They responded when officers heard some interesting noise coming from a box. Turns out what they heard was purring. They thought maybe it was ticking. Oh. Anyway, they scanned the uh, the box. Guess what it was? A kitty. A six-day-old kitten and their mothers. Aww. They were found along with a note saying that they had been born Wednesday. The note said the mom's name is Sprinkles. They are now being cared for at a local humane society. Somebody dropped them off at the church going, oh, hey, you know what? I can't take care of them, but... You guys take them, you know. So when they when they got there, they saw this box, and there was like a weird noise that they thought right. was ticking. Okay, well, it turns out it was purring. So thank goodness. What a bizarre story, though. That is today's weird news, brought to you by WeirdGiftOfTheDay.com. Now your moment of duh, brought to you by RedCrossBlood.org. Police in the UK, uh, that's also known as the United Kingdom. Yes, it is. They began to suspect that the man they pulled over was not being truthful when they asked him for his name, and he said, uh, my name is James. James Bond. And they go, hmm, you sure your name's not Polly? And he goes, no, 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 my name is my name is James. Well, turns out he had the name Polly tattooed on his neck. <laughs> <laughs> Polly, uh, by the way, was identifying oh, himself. Oh goodness, as James and James is his brother. Uh, you know but what? His name I feel is like Pauly. I've heard this before. No, we've heard stories like this, but this just recently happened. So here's the thing that's weird: who gets their own name tattooed on themselves? Isn't that bizarre? I've seen. You know, I know people that have names tattooed on them, but not their own name. <laughs> but I mean, I suppose some people wear. You know, a necklace with your own name or your own uh, yeah, initial yeah. on it or something. This I don't is... know. Maybe a tattoo is the same. You I have to know. let me know if you've got one of those. Facebook.com slash John and Heidi Show. Early to bed, early to rise makes you healthy, wealthy, and wise. 
This is a great quote from Benjamin Franklin. At insurancechicken.com, we know a thing or two about great quotes. We help people get great insurance quotes every day. It's super simple and free to find out if we can make you healthy, wealthy, and wise. Okay, I can't guarantee that. But I can assure you we'd love to help at insurancechicken.com. We want to help you pack out great deals on insurance. That's insurancechicken.com. Time now for Is It a Golf Course or Is It a Rehab Center? Brought to you by timeforrehab.com. Heidi, tell me, Brickyard Crossing, Indianapolis, Indiana. Is it a golf course or is it a rehab center? I'm going to say that's a golf course. And the answer is... Golf course, yeah. golf clap for Heidi. Good I don't job. think you'd name a rehab center. After Brickyard a, Crossing. Yeah, yeah, probably not. Who knows? Maybe you would. Uh, that is how we play. For those of you who are new here, is it a golf course or is it a rehab center? Brought to you by TimeForRehab.com. John and Heidi. This portion of the John and Heidi Show is brought to you by the John and Heidi Show. That sounds kind of funny, but it's true. Go to your local radio station and ask them to start carrying the John and Heidi Show. Here's the best part. They can carry the show for free. They play a couple commercials, but it doesn't cost them anything every month. So if you know a radio station that could use a little bit of help, send them our way. Send them to johnandheidyshow.com. Again, johnandheidyshow.com. We would love to do a radio program in your community. Then you could listen to the podcast and listen to us on the radio. John and Heidi. We always like to wrap things up around here with good news, and I think this is good news. It comes your way courtesy of bettercreditcards.com. And this, I just think, again, I love this segment. We always have such cool stories here, but I, I don't even know that I could say this is my favorite because everyone is my favorite. Couple hosts delivery driver for five days after her car got stuck in the snow. So listen to this. A delivery driver in Texas is feeling blessed after she was allowed to stay at a couple's home for five days. Her car got stuck in their yard amidst the winter storm. So Nina Richardson and Doug Condon checked on Timmons to try to help her get her vehicle up the driveway, but it was stuck. They said, well, we'll just come inside and wait for a tow. Well, it was five days later she was finally able to leave. On a Facebook post, she shared her amazing experience with the couple. Uh, it says, day five, stranded with a stranger. And you can read through this. I've, it's way too long for me to read it all. But she's basically just talking about how amazing these people are. Right. And their dog is awesome. And they baked her a cake. And they Aww. all of these things. It's just the coolest thing ever. And uh, they say at the bottom of the story, she just kind of became part of the family pretty darn quickly. So they say that they plan to stay in touch now. And how cool is that? That's she was, awesome. She was literally there delivering something, and uh, she said, "Blessed, uh, how amazingly blessed am I at this? Am I at this moment?" And it goes through all of these big long things. But my favorite is, <laughs> "Blessed that they liked my coconut cake." She baked them a cake to show her gratitude. Oh, she baked them a yeah, cake. Yeah. Oh, cute. She's like, "You guys mind if I bake you a cake?" So she went in her kitchen and eh, a little of this, a little of that. Aww. So yeah, this delivery driver was trying to deliver them something. Uh, food, uh, food was it? Uh, oh yeah, yeah. So. Uh, blessed that H-E-B curbside delayed their Saturday delivery and pushed it to Sunday. So I I guess she's kind of liking the fact that she was the one that got to do this. It really is a neat story. I love that. It's in the show notes for today at johnandheidyshow.com. Time to say goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great day. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show this weekend.